how to reduce Splunk costs using data filtering, event rewriting, and ingest action. In this video, I will present five methods to reduce Splunk costs and provide configuration examples of data filtering. Splunk is a powerful tool for analyzing and visualizing a large amount of data, but it comes with a hefty price tag. By default, Splunk ingests all logs without applying any filters. However, upon examination, you may discover that only a portion of these logs contain relevant information. Events that do not provide valuable information can contribute to increased license costs. To reduce this cost, it may be beneficial to filter out such events or keep only relevant events and ignore anything else. In order to effectively pre-filter logs, it's important to have a good understanding of log structure and content, as well as the meanings of specific event ID and fields. It's also important to understand the potential consequences of removing too much data, as this could result in loss of important events. In version 9 of Splunk, the ingest action user interface was introduced as a tool for optimizing the filtering of events. This feature allows you to interactively build a configuration and see an estimated saving, making it a valuable resource for reducing Splunk license costs and improving performance. If logs are sent through an intermediate syslog server, you may notice the inclusion of an additional syslog header. However, much of the information in this header is not useful and may even lead to timestamp issues. This is because Splunk may try to use the first timestamp from a syslog header instead of the timestamp from the original event. This syslog timestamp can be incorrect due to time zone differences, the network latency or other issues. Aside from the host field, there is typically no useful information in the syslog header. The syslog header is usually 30 to 50 bytes in length, and for a 20 byte event, this can represent up to a 25% increase in data. To address this issue, it's suggested that Splunk can be configured to extract the host field from the syslog header and then discard the syslog header. Some logs may include a large number of noisy events such as trace, debug and status messages, which do not contain relevant information. To filter out these events, you can use a regular expression and send all matched events to the null queue. A more extreme but risky approach to reducing Splunk data volume is to only ingest relevant events, such as successful and unsuccessful events, and ignore all other events. This method can provide a greater saving, but it's important to fully understand the potential consequences. For example, if an event is in slightly different format, it may not be locked, which could result in Splunk missing important information. It's crucial to carefully consider the implication of this approach before implementing it. Some logs, such as firewall events, may contain fixed strings that are either not relevant or do not change. It's possible to rewrite these events and remove such substring to reduce the volume of data being indexed by Splunk. However, this method can have drawbacks. Rewriting events in this way may break the parsing process on Splunk's side and could result in incorrect formatted events if the event structure changes. It's important to carefully consider these potential issues before implementing this method. Windows generates a large amount of information by default, and if you are only interested in security events, it may be necessary to filter the event IDs to only ingest relevant ones. Fortunately, there is an option to pre-filter events ID on the universal forwarder, and it's easy to configure. A list of relevant events ID to monitor can be found online. Implementing even a single one of these methods can significantly reduce Splunk license costs, improve performance, reduce load, and decrease storage requirements.